Hey guys, welcome to section 4.9. In this section, we'll talk about how to factor trinomials using the AC method. Let's get started. So let's look at an example just to start off. And let's say we're being asked to factor 225x squared plus 30x plus 1. And we bring back our friendly chart of the decision tree we have to make. So we're given a factor in question. The first thing we look at is the GCF. Next thing, if there is no GCF or once we find it, is how many terms there are. So looking at the GCF, there is none because one of the numbers in the problem is a 1. And whenever that's the case, we cannot have a GCF because this has nothing to give up to contribute to the 225 or the 30. So GCF is gone. How many terms? We have three terms. And we check to see if the formulas work. Well, 225 is a perfect square, 1 is a perfect square, and all of these are pluses. So maybe the formula a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, which is a plus b the quantity squared, this one might work. So we find the square root of 15x squared, or sorry, 225x squared, and the square root is 15x. We find the square root of 1, we get 1. We copy down the sign in the middle and we put a square around the whole thing. And now we have to remember that we need to check the middle term. And the way we do that is by finding 2ab. So the 2ab from our guess needs to match the 2ab in the problem. And if it does, then we have our answer. And if it doesn't, well, then this does not, this approach does not work. We have to try something else. So two times a times b gives us 30x, and that's indeed what we have in the question. So we get confirmation that 225x squared plus 30x plus 1 does indeed factor to 15x plus 1 times 15x plus 1. So this was an example of stuff that we had done in the past. But what happens exactly if we have a GCF, or worst case scenario, we don't have a GCF, we have three terms, and neither of these two formulas work? And the next thing we need to consider is, is a equal to 1? And this a is not the same as this a. When we write quadratic expressions, whenever we have a square that makes this expression a quadratic, whenever we have quadratic expressions, we represent them with ax squared plus bx plus c. This a can either be 1 or it could be something besides 1. So this is the a we're talking about. When I say, is a1, that's the a I'm talking about. Oops, how do I get rid of this? So if this a happens to be 1, then we can use the AC method. So let's say we look at this example, factor x squared minus 2x minus 143. Now again, we look at our decision tree. Is there a GCF? Well, one of the coefficients is 1, so we cannot have a GCF. Next thing is, how many terms do we have? Well, we have 1, 2, 3 terms. And we can figure out fairly quickly that the formulas are not going to work here because 143 is not a perfect square. Not only that, if you look at the formula, the signs in the formula, they either all have to be positive or it has to be positive, negative, positive. The only thing that could be negative is the sign in the middle. In this case, the last term is negative. So for multiple reasons, the formulas don't work here. But however, we can look to see that the coefficient of x squared is 1. So since a is 1, we can use the AC method. And here's an explanation of what the AC method actually is. Before we start, we need to figure out what a, b, and c are for this problem. A is the coefficient or the number next to x squared always, or whatever the variable is, squared. B is always the number including the sign next to the x. C is always the number including the sign next, uh, just by itself. That's the constant free floating. So the first step to the AC method is to multiply A and C, hence the name the AC method. So if you multiply A, and c, you get 1 times negative 143, which is negative 143. So now what we have to do as part 2 or step 2 of this problem 
is to get all the factors of negative 143. Now you'll notice I circled, or not circled, but underlined the word all, because we do need to find all the factors. This is typically where I run into the first problem with most students that insist on doing this in their head instead of making a chart or a table. My, my very, very, very strong recommendation would be to do this in an orderly fashion so that you don't skip or miss one of the pairs that would have been the answer. And I, when I use the lecture, I, I picked this number on particular, in particular because no one had ever come up with the factors on the spot. People always just said, oh, it cannot be factored, it must be prime. When in fact, it can be factored, and I'll show you how. So the way I make this factor tree is always, I write the number on top, AC, whatever that number is, I make two lines, and then I start writing all the factors. So the trivial factors are obviously 1 times negative 143, and then I immediately flip the signs because the negatives are typically the ones that students forget. So if 1, comma, 1, 4, negative 143 is a factor, negative 1 and positive 143 must also be a factor. We're just flip-flopping the signs. So because 1 times negative 143 is negative 143, negative 1 times positive 143 is also negative 143. So then the next number I think about is 2. Well, 2 does not go into negative 143. So that gets across, three does not work, four does not work, five does not work. And I just tried all these in a calculator. I just typed in 143 divided by two. Well, I didn't do that for two because I know it's an odd number. So it won't be divisible by two. Well, if it's not divisible by two, it won't be divisible by four, six, eight, 10, or 12 because all these are even numbers. So then I tried three in my machine, three gave me a decimal, five did not work, seven did not work, nine did not work. And then when I got to 11, 11 did work. So I put down 11 times negative 13, and then negative 11 times 13. The next number is 12, 12 did not work, and 13 is already in my list. So that's how I know I'm done. So you basically stop when either the number repeats, which is like you get something like 8 times 8. So whenever the number repeats means you don't have to try any other numbers, that's it. That's the end of the problem. Or as you start throwing these potential factors away, you end up at a number that's already in your list. So 11 was already or 11 worked, so I put 11 here times -13 negative 11 times 13, 12 didn't work, 13 is already in my list, so that's why I don't try any other numbers. Now, I had the third step in this process is to choose a pair of factors that adds up to b, which was the middle number here. So from scratch, you multiply a and c, you find factors of ac that add up to b. That's basically the entire idea. So from this list of factors, we see that if we were to add 1 and negative 143, we would get negative 142. Here we would get 142, here we would get negative 2, and here we would get 2. The one we need is negative 2, so we choose that pair. 11 minus 13 gives us negative 2, so those are the two numbers we pick. And the nice thing with the AC method is that when this coefficient of x squared is 1, we can jump directly to the answer from this tree. We don't have to do anything extra that we will need to in the next section. So the answers are x plus 11 and x minus 13. These are the two factors. So where did the 11 and the negative 13 come from? Well, they came from our factor tree. Those were the two numbers that added to give us negative 2. So that's what the answer is. That's basically the entire problem. Let's look at a couple others. So let's say we have 2x squared plus 34x plus 120. And if we go back, again, factoring question, first thing we should think of is the GCF. And in fact, that saves are behind here because if we had not factored the GCF out, the formulas would not have worked and we could never have used the AC method. The AC method is far simpler and shorter than splitting the middle term. So you should always try to use it whenever possible. But if we had not found the GCF or factored it out, we would have been left with an, a value of A that is not 1, 
and then we end up having to do a lot more work than needed. So the GCF actually saves are behind here. Uh, we factor out a two because two goes into two, two goes into 34 and two goes into 60. So factoring that out leaves behind x squared plus 17x plus 60. So we're done with the GCF. And after the GCF, we ask ourselves, how many terms do we have? We have one, two, three terms, so three terms. The formulas do not work because even though these are all positive numbers, I can find the square root of x squared, but I cannot find the square root of 60. So 60 is not a perfect square. So that's why I cannot use either of these formulas. And at this stage, I come down this branch because a is one. When we factored out the two, we were left behind with a coefficient of one on x squared. So for this problem, we see that a is one, b is 17, and c is 60. So again, we multiply a and c, a times c gives us 60. And now we have to find factors of 60. So again, we go down in an orderly fashion so we don't skip or miss any one of them. 1 times 60 is 60. Negative 1 times negative 60 is also 60. So I always use the negatives right away so I don't forget about them. 2 goes into 60 30 times, as does negative 2, negative 30 times. 3 also works, so 3 times 20, the same with the negatives. 4 works as well, 4 times 15, negative 4, negative 15. 5 also works, 5 times 12. Negative five works as well, negative five times negative 12. Six also works, and this is, 60 is one of these strange numbers where everything you try goes into it. So six times 10, negative six, negative 10. And then when you try seven, seven does not work. Eight does not go into 60, neither does nine. 10 does go into 60, but 10 is already on my list. So that's what I mentioned above, that you either wait until a number repeats or you get to a number that's already on the list and then you say, okay, I don't have to try any other numbers because 11 is not going to work, but 12 is already on the list. 13 won't work, 14 won't work, 15 would work, but it's already on the list. So the first time a number repeats, everything else will then just be on this side of the column. So now we wanted numbers or a pair of factors of 60 that adds up to 17. Well, I'll let you add up all of these, but the ones that add up to 17 are 5 and 12, because 5 plus 12 is 17. So all I have to do is then just keep the two on the outside. The GCF never just vanishes, it stays there. But because A is 1, the AC method allows me to jump directly to the answer. The answer is always the GCF stays on the outside. X plus 5, where did the 5 come from? It came from right here, or it came from my table. And then the other number, uh, the other factor was x plus 12. The 12 also came from the same place. Let's look at one or a couple more. These should go quickly because hopefully you notice that now I'm giving you a problem with the same number for AC. So x squared minus 16x plus 60 you'll notice that there is no GCF. The formula doesn't work because the 60 breaks it again. You have three terms and A is one, so we can use the AC method. That's another benefit of drawing the entire chart in at once, so that now you can just keep referencing it again and again instead of having to rack your brain and say, oh, I wonder which pair works here, and potentially not ever thinking about that pairing. So. We want to find factors that add up to negative 16. And if you notice, negative 6 and minus 10 add to give you negative 16. So that's my answer. x minus 6 and x minus 10. x squared minus 16x plus 60 equals x minus 6 times x minus 10. For the next one, x squared minus 32x plus 60, we can in fact use the same table again to get negative 32. Negative 2 minus 30 gives us negative 32. So in one go, we have our answer. x squared minus 32x plus 60 comes from x minus 2 being multiplied by x minus 30. So making these tables the very first time takes a bit of time, but once you have it on your sheet of paper, you can just keep referencing these again and again instead of having to make them every single time or just guessing and checking. 
The other important reason for using these or making this table to completion is these are the only factors that exist for the number 60. There are no other factors of 60. So it's not like, oh, there might be one that I just never thought of, or, oh, that, that, you know, that was one that never crossed my mind. This is it. These are all that exist. So what happens if you try adding all these pairs of numbers and none of them add up to the one that, that's in your problem? Well, then you have to try a different technique. But you can do that with 100% certainty instead of saying, oh, I wasted all this time you know, constantly thinking and running through numbers in my head in an unorganized or disorganized fashion, and I never came up with the right answer. So instead of wasting time on assessments, on quizzes or tests, it's advisable to just make this table once and then just keep reusing it again and again for other problems as well. Uh, let's look at this one as a last example. Let's say we have x squared minus 4x minus 12. Again, one of the coefficients is 1, so we cannot use, there is no GCF. We have three terms in the problem, so we are coming down the middle. We have three terms, so the first thing we try are the formulas. The formulas do not work because the signs don't match or the signs don't work. If you look again, all three signs have to be positive or it has to go positive, negative, positive. In this case, the 12 is negative. So uh, that, and even if this were a positive, the 12 is not a perfect square. So we cannot use that, the first formula anyways. So we come down to the AC method, which requires us to know what A, B, and C are. We multiply a and c, a, or sorry, one times negative 12 is negative 12. And then we find all the factors of negative 12. So we start with negative one and 12, one and negative 12, two and negative six, negative two and six, three goes into negative 12 as well, negative four times, negative three, four times. And when we get to four, we don't have to try it because four is already on my list. So I don't have to try any other numbers. I know that this is an exhaustive list of all the factors that possibly could exist for the number negative 12. And if negative four does not come as a sum of any of them, then I'm home free. I, I tried everything I could using the AC method. It just simply does not work for this pair of numbers. However, we're in luck. Negative four does come as a sum of six, uh, negative two, sorry. Negative four does come as a sum of two and negative six. Two minus six is negative four. So those two numbers will be our split. Those two numbers will be our answers. So the original function or expression that we had was x squared minus four x minus 12. This factors to x plus two, the two comes from right here, and x minus six, which comes from right there. If you have any questions, please let me know. 